Hey everyone, welcome to Inside South Florida. Thank you for watching. I'm your host Jason Carter. It's good to see you. And starting things off today, best known as the divorce coach, Sara Davison has created revolutionary new ways to cope with breakups and divorce. She's combined her coaching skills with her own personal divorce experience in her newest book, Uncoupling, How to Survive and Thrive After Breakup and Divorce. And Sara joins us now in studio on Inside South Florida. Good morning. Welcome to the show. Oh, thanks for having me, Jake. Absolutely. Glad to have you here. Welcome to Miami. Oh, thank you. I'm <laughs> loving it. I'm loving, loving the it. weather, loving the humidity. <laughs> yeah, and the people. And the, we'll take all of that. <laughs> yes, yes. This book, Sara, um, as I said, is a playbook for people trying to mend. And this was inspired by your own yeah. divorce. Tell us about that. Yeah, well, I found out after only a couple of years of marriage that my husband didn't want to be married to me. He'd actually fallen in love with somebody else and moved on really, really quickly, which whilst he was super happy, left me absolutely devastated. Um, our son was only one. Um, so I was a single mum overnight, lost my husband, and we also worked together. So there was so much change in my life that at that point, like people going through breakups, I just didn't see a future. I couldn't even see a light at the end of the tunnel. And this was abrupt, him. Oh yeah you had no 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 inkling or anything well that's really interesting you say that because with hindsight you look back and you think ah i should have spotted this there were definitely red flags and this is why i work with clients all over the world on these challenges because yeah you can kick yourself when you think gosh yeah if i'd have done things differently what if but actually if someone's made that decision for you there isn't much choice so you've got to get on you've got to move forward so. you can't force someone to love you if they don't want to absolutely what does bonnie Raitt say i can't make you love me if you don't Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so from your own experience, here we have this book, and in the book you highlight and illustrate the five stages of emotion that you go through post-breakup, post-divorce. Post what are they? Well, it's really interesting because most people don't know that divorce is known as the second most traumatic life experience we go through after the death sense. of a loved one. Yeah, absolutely. So it actually follows those same stages. So you go through denial, where a lot of the times, one of my clients, for example, found a an Anne Summers receipt. Now, Anne Summers is, is a lingerie, uh, but it's kind of risque. She uh -huh. wasn't that kind of person. So she was like, oh, maybe it's for Christmas because this was October. And she waited and then she didn't get any underwear. And then time went on. She still didn't talk to anyone, which is surprising to some, but actually it's because if you talk about it, it makes it more real. You have to confront things. So denial is the first stage we often go through. And then, uh, then it goes to anger. And some people go to real rage. Some people less so, maybe that's not your natural thing, but maybe more frustration or stress. Um, then bargaining, which I think is fascinating because we kind of do whatever we can to either get our partner back or not change where we are. So we might start making more of an effort, you know, cooking their favorite meal every night, doing things to impress them or to make us look more attractive again. That can be quite painful at times if you're constantly rejected. Um, then we go on to depression. And that's the stage where a lot of people will get stuck because they might go to their GP and their GP will label them as depressed. But that's not a label for life. That is just to grieve the end of that process, which is essential in the healing from this broken relationship. And then the final is, is that acceptance, where you're moving on, you've taken off the rose tinted glasses, you want to move on, but maybe you're not quite sure how. When you speak it out loud, it becomes real. And as you said, people don't want to confront uh, what's inevitable because it hurts too much, but you have created a safe space for people to do that. Yes. Well, I think a lot of people, their friends get fed up of hearing the same story, um, especially if it's been sort of three or four months and they think you should be a bit further down the line, but it doesn't work like that. It's a roller coaster of negative emotions. So actually having a safe space, I run support groups while well, my accredited coaches who I've trained personally, they run support groups online so you can jump on, they're on Zoom and you can spend an hour. There's lots of different choices of days and times during the week. You can jump on, get advice, get support, share your story and hear others, which is great for not feeling alone, finding your tribe and actually knowing that you've got some somewhere to vent and to talk to get that support that you really need. Sarah Davison, it has been a pleasure to have you on Inside South Florida. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I've loved it.